Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Licentious Leroy Pearson of Greater St. Paul, where our pastor is Dr. Reverend Toby H. Pollock. And I greet you all this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. As I come this morning to teach our church school lesson, and we have a new lesson this quarter. And the title of the book is Call in the New Testament. Call in the New Testament. And as we jump into the church school lesson, and we're looking at lesson number one. Lesson number one, December the 6th, 2020. This last month in year 2020. The last month in this year of 2020, the last, and we thank God for bringing us this far by faith. We thank God for keeping us and never leaving us through this pandemic. So we just thank God this morning that he allowed me to come into your home to discuss what does says the Lord. And we look at the topic of our lesson, Call Through Heritages. Called through heritage. And heritage is something that is handed down. Ancestor, culture, custom. And when we see the word call mean to schedule, chosen. And when we look at the scriptures for this lesson here, is lesson scripture is Matthew 1, 1 through 17. And Hebrew 1. Focus scripture is Hebrew 1, 1 through 5, and Matthews 1, 1 through 6, and 16 through 17. And our key verse for this lesson is, in those, day, in those last days, he has spoken to us by his son, who he appointed heirs of all things, through whom also created the world, Hebrew 1 and 2. So in the last day, he has spoken to us by his son, which is Jesus the Christ, not by the prophet, who he appointed heirs of all things. And we go back and we look at Genesis when God said, come, let us make man in our image. He was talking to his son. He wasn't talking to the angels. He was talking to his son when he said, let us make men in our image. So we thank God for being the image of him. And when we look at Matthew 1, 1 through 17, it's the general genealogies of Jesus, where Jesus came through, how he came down through the Old Testament into Matthew's, where he was born. And when we look at Hebrew 1 through 5, and it one through five is God's supreme revelation. That's telling us that what Jesus did and how he was formed and why he died for us. And when he went back to heaven and how he sat by our father on the right hand, interceding for us. Let us pray as we jump in to see what does says the Lord within this context. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you on this Sunday morning, on this first Sunday of December. Lord, we just thank you, Father God, for keeping us through this year, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for all the ups and downs, Father God. But most of all, we just thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on that old rugged cross, Father God, that we may have life and have it more abundant. We thank you this morning, Father God. And Father God, as I come teaching your word this morning, remove Leroy and have thy way, Holy Spirit, teaching your people, Lord God. I just thank you and I praise and I glorify you because you are an awesome God. Touch your people right now, Father God. Guide them like only you can. Lord, we love you and we need you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Call through heritage. Call through heritage. And when we look at Hebrew 1, 1 through 5, and Matthew 1, 1 through 6, and 16 through 17, in RSV, where I'll be reading from, 
And when you get there, you will find these words here that are recorded in Hebrew 1, 1 through 5. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophet. Now remember who a prophet is. The prophet was the mouthpiece of God. When we look at back in the Old Testament, it was 12 prophets, from the major to the minor prophet. And it was God's mouthpiece going out telling God's people what thus says the Lord. But in those last days, he has spoken to us by a son, who he appointed heirs of all things, through whom he also created the world. So now he's speaking to us through his son, Jesus the Christ. And we look at the creator of the world. As I said earlier, when God said, let us go make man in our image, he was talking about us. He was talking to Jesus, making us in their image to be like them, to be rulers, conquerors, the head, not the tail. He is the reflection of God's glory. He reflected of God's glory and a exact imprint of God. Very being. Jesus is everything God is. That's why he said, I am in my father. My father is in me. Because he was his father. And he come to do his father's will. Not his, but his father's will. And he sustained all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majestic on high. Purification of sin to free from guilty or evil. Cleanse us. He cleansed. He cleansed. And once he did what he had to do on this earth, he went back and sit back by his father, the majestic on high and on the right hand side, ruling this world. So we thank God for we have a high power that intercedes for us, even when we messed up. He's still interceding for us. Clean us up. Put us back where we belong. So we thank God this morning for Jesus. Having become as much superior to angels as the name he had inherited is more excellent than theirs. He letting us know the angels shall bow down to my son Jesus. Angels are not superior to Jesus. God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and angels are ministers of God, doing what God commands them to go out to do. For to wit that of the angel did God ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you, or again I will be his father, and he shall be my son. Excuse me. My son, he said none of that to none of the angels. Only one he mentioned that to and made that comment to was his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. That's why when he, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't say when you believe in the angels, he believe in my son. But the angels are ministers of God. And they God dispatched them out to protect us. So we have to understand that Jesus is superior. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Not the angels, but God. Jesus, we thank him. Matthew 1, 1 through 6. And it's given an account of of the gene genealogies of Jesus, the Messiah, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac the father, father of Jacob, and Jacob the father of Judah and his brother, and Judah the father of Perez, and Zachary, Zachary by Tamar, and Perez the father of Hazon, Haron, and Haron the father of Aram, and Aram the father of Amadad, and Amadad the father of Nashon, and Nashon the father of Salmon, and Salmon the father of 
Boaz by Rahab, and Boaz the father of Obed by Ruth, and Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of King David, and David was the father of Solomon by the wife of Uriah, the wife of Uriah. And verse 16 through 17, and what is showing here is the genealogy of where Jesus started from and how he came down through the years of the genealogy. How he was born to different, how he came down from the start of an Abraham all the way down to David, to Solomon. And Jacob, 16, 17, and Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born, who is called the Messiah. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations, 14 generations from Abraham to David and from Abraham to David and 14 generations from David to the deportation of Babylon. 14 generations and deportation deportation of Babylon to the Messiah. 14 generations that Jesus came through to earth. 14. And when we look at each one of these men that this generation that he came down, none of them was perfect. All of them has flaws. And that letting us know God can use anybody that he sees that he wants to use. He could clean anybody up to do his will and his work. And it was 42 generations between Jesus coming to this earth and the beginning of Abraham. 42 generations down through the years. So we thank God for his son Jesus. A record of gene genealogies, a record of ancestors, or one person, a family tree of a particular group. Eschiology. Genealogy, a branch of study about the end time or last thing, a study of the end of life. The world, a study of how the world ends, including death, judgment, human destruction, the future. So that's what we're looking at now, technology. That's what we face with now. Introduction. Through history, God called people from the cause of Adam and Eve to the present, God give pe given people assignment, but the way people respond to God's call differently. People may answer God's call by saying yes. Others may at me question if they heard God's voice. Some may wonder if God made a mistake. Some may ask God, did you mean to call me? Still others tell God no. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people rely on their family ancestors to determine if God called them to a particular vocation, particular job, particular ministry, particular area. Excuse me. And that's what we have to look at. Because a lot of times when I was growing up and as I got older and everything, and I said, well, let me clean myself up before I give my life to God. That was going to never happen. If you're sitting there saying, let me clean myself up before I give my life to God, you're going to die dirty then. You come to Christ, and Christ do the cleaning. Christ do the restoring. Because I was in the midst of sin when God called me. When he pulled up me out, took my foot out of that old muddy cliff and placed it on solid ground. So I thank God for moving me in a way that brings glory to his name. No, I'm not perfect, not by a long shot, but I strive every day to bring glory to God's name. I try to be a mouthpiece for God, telling people about Jesus, how he saved me out of my mess, 
out of my nest. So don't ever say you waiting to clean yourself up, to give your life to God, because you never will. God do the clean and come to him. He cleans and restore you and use you like he want to use you. People going to ridicule you. They're going to talk about you. But in spite of all that, continue to do what does says the Lord. Allow God to manifest in your life and lead and guide you. No one family tree can give information. God may call family members to the same type of work. Family members may have similar traits. Every Christian can trace their family root to Jesus. Jesus' genealogy include people who did good and people who did evil. Good and evil. But God used both of them. God used both of them. So we thank God for not being like man to judge us. Well, I remember him from way back when. I remember his parents. I remember. No, don't remember all that. You remember who God had made us to be now. And what he's doing in our life now. How he had made us a mouthpiece. And the most important thing I love about this song by the William Brook. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. That is a true song. Because I'm a nobody. But I'm trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. So don't look at a person's past. You look at where God is taking them. Because he, he, he has wrote the end before the beginning. And he's moving you along the line where he had lined up for you. That includes you. You desire how you respond to God's calling. I respond to God calling saying, yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Use me in any aspect of my life that you want to use me. Like I tell people all the time, my life is an open book. I have nothing to hide because what God had done for me, he can do the same for you. How he had brought me through all the turmoil, all the ups and downs, all the depression. He had kept me. That's why I can sit here before you today and discuss God's word to let you know how he came down through the generations of life. Everybody wasn't perfect, but God used them to develop Jesus, the Messiah, the great I am. And I thank God this day for his son, Jesus. And when we look at telling the Bible story, Hebrew 1 through 5, God created the earth, the sky, the animal, and people. Human were expected to worship God, love one another, and care for the earth. All that fall apart with Adam and Eve. But God continued to love us still yet. When humans failed to do any of these, God called and sent a prophet among them. His mouthpiece to speak to his people. When you go back and think about, I did a sermon on Jonah, why God sent Jonah to Nineveh. To tell Nineveh to repent and turn away from their wicked ways. But that prophet Jonah wanted to do what he wanted to do. Prophet warned about coming judgment. Prophet told people to repent and turn back to God. Prophet gave God restoration promise to those who repent. Every prophet shared a specific message to a specific person over a specific period of time from Moses to Malachi. God spoke through prophet, however, the prophet's voice did not stop patterns of obedient then disobedient. Even though God sent his prophet to talk to the people, they still wanted to do what they wanted to do. Faith, then doubt. Worship, then blessing, blasphemy. Therefore, the last day God chose to speak in a new way. Like the parable God said, maybe if I send my son, they will listen. Matthew 21, 33 through 46. He said, I sent my son, maybe they'll listen to him. I done sent all these other men along the way to tell my people how to act and what to do. But they continue 
to do what they want to do. So it comes down to me now sending my son to walk this earth here. So God sent Jesus who speak the same eschatology message as the prophet did. Saying the same thing. Repent. Turn away from your wicked way. Seek God's faith. Jesus said that is that in the last day, death and judgment will happen. It's going to happen. Matthew 24. Most important, Jesus, who is a reflection of God and live with God, tell us that every soul found destination will be revealed. Every soul. Everything. So just think about what you're doing and how you're doing it. Because it will be judged. And God and Jesus will be doing the judging. Two questions. Why do you think people do not respond to prophecy warning? And I wrote, because they are wanting to wanting it to happen now. A lot of times a prophet come in and they tell you something, you looking for it the next day. It don't happen that way. It don't happen that way. When God sent a word to you, you just stay the course and do what God's way, God's command you to do. Continue to pray and say, God, show me the way that you are taking me from this prophecy that has come my way. Don't just look for the, oh yeah, God, I'm going to get this money in and it's coming tomorrow. No, it don't work like that. God said you'll have good health. God, why am I going through this? Year? You live and stay yet in it. So you're going to go through some things. If God called you to share a prophecy message, now, what would you say? This is what the Lord said. This is what the Holy Spirit has put in my spirit to tell you what thus says the Lord. A lot of times we thought people won't talk to people because of the past history with them. But once you're a new creature in Christ, he equip you to go to people, whether it's your ex, whether it's your ex, 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 whoever it is, you still have to have love for that person to do what God commands you to do. You can't shy away from what God is telling you to do, where to go. A lot of us don't want to do it because, no, if God is for you, the devil can do you no harm. So continue to do what does says the Lord. And when we look at Matthew 1, 1 through 7 in the Bible story, Bible, Bible see, genealogy record may prove hard to read. After all reading, was the father of or begotten repeatedly may seem pointless. And in addition, many biblical names seem hard to pronounce for God. Genealogy has significance, bringing beginning with the first record in Genesis 4 to the one in today's lesson in Matthew 17. Genealogy gives important information and insight. Personal listening in Jesus' ancestors have flaws. Have flaws. They was not perfect. They all sin because God loved them. God overlooked their sin. God chose them as Jesus' ancestors. God chose them. Jesus' genealogy, genealogy included foreign sinners, old, young, and poor, and showed God love. God love. They showed God love in the midst of all this. Jacob tricked his brother and stole his brother blessing. Stole his brother blessing. Judah fathered his daughter-in-law, son. Perez, some scholar believe Rahab was the prostitute who had the, had hidden the spies, Jonah too. David, the youngest of Jesse's son, a warrior with blood on his hand. Ironic, Tamar, rape. Second Samuel 13, David had forbidden sexual relationship with Bathsheba and ordered Job, Job to orchestrate the killing of her Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, one of the mighty men, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, married several foreign women. Those women convinced Solomon to elect idols to their God. Even worse, Solomon turned from the true God 
and worship those idols. First King 11, 1 through 8. Mary lived in Nazareth, a small, unimportant town. So we see here God uses who he wants to use, how he wants to use them. Great down through the, through the bloodline. God chose the least likely to show us that Jesus' family is made of ordinary people, ordinary. From one generation to the next, God called imperfect people. From Abraham to Joseph, they answered God's calling. They did not use their flaws as an excuse to tell God no. In consideration, Jesus' ancestors, we can understand why God spent sent Jesus to earth. We needed a savior, and God called Jesus from ancestors, line of sinners. Line of sinners. He didn't come from perfect people, as I said earlier. All of them had flaws. All of them had mayhaps and whole. In turn, Jesus called us as imperfect, as we are to do God's will. What do you want? What do you know about your family history? Which family trait do you see in yourself? How can adopting children learn about their relationship? When we look at what God has done and what God has continued to do, he don't use people that we say are perfect because no one in this earth is perfect. We all have flaws. We all fall short of God's glory. So we have to continue to do what thus says the Lord. And the life application is our close. God said in Genesis, let us make human in our image. As I said earlier, human in our image. Though we are made in God's image, we still sin. Prophets may deliver God's word begging us to repent and warn of judgment. And we don't too often these words fall on deaf ears. We don't listen to them. If we look at our family history, we see victory and failure. For that reason, the message of Jesus' ancestors should encourage us. God has sinned, including in Jesus' ancestors. God includes sinners like us in the record of Jesus' descendants. The only thing God requires is that we believe in Jesus, which will change us from sinner to saint. Believe in Jesus, that God sent his only begotten son into this earth, that we may live through him, that we may have life, may have it more abundantly, even though we are sinners, but saved by God's grace. So we thank God this morning for his word. We thank God for the heritage of Jesus, how he sent him down the bloodline of sinners, unperfect people like we are. And as we close with the day's prayer, Lord, we thank you that you call ordinary people to become part of your family. We are grateful that Jesus, our brother, sit at your right hand praying for us. We thank you for our ancestors. We thank you for our calling and our place in history. In Jesus' name, amen. I thank you all for your attention this morning to come into your house to Teach God's word. And it's so exciting just to know that God used ordinary people, old sinners, old broke down people, to deliver his word, to do his will, to walk in light, to bring light in this dark world. So I thank him for choosing old Leroy to do his will. I thank him for not looking at my past and saying, no, you're not qualified to do my will. I thank God this morning. I praise him. Just glorify him. I thank y'all for y'all attention. I love y'all. Be blessed and have an outstanding day. In Jesus' name, amen.